So, first off, I'd like to point out that I do appreciate developers listening to the community and actually trying to implement features that would make us gamers happy. But when it comes to a game that has a story and you pretty much don't play too much after, or you revisit when there's DLC or something like that, it's frustrating to see them doing this because a lot of people have already spent their money, gone through the gameplay experience, and now they don't have the motivation or the thrive to go back and revisit just because they finally listened six months later. And that's exactly what's happened with Dying Light 2. And I was frustrated to see it when I launched up the game. I sat there, I reinstalled it or switched it over to my internal drive or whatever. And they have put out community update number one, presenting features our community was dying to have. So the new options, they've added a new color grading option in the video settings. Try gritty to make your game look similar to the 2019 gameplay presentation. They've added the possibility to toggle chromatic aberration on and off in the video settings. Then there are various general improvements with things like mods now being able to increase a weapon's maximum durability. And then they've made changes to the infected. There are more biters now roaming the city. They are now more aggressive at night. Virals are now much more vigilant and will leave their hideouts more eagerly if they hear a fight nearby. You will encounter more special infected at night and be wary of dark hollows and forsaken stores during the day. Encounters there can be quite volatile. Then they've got some PS5 and Xbox Series X changes where they have added a balanced mode on PS5. They've increased resolutions and upscaling and basically things like that. So I jumped on, I thought, okay, I'll try out Gritty. And it gives a nice look to, like, similar to the 2019 gameplay presentation. But the thing is, I don't want that six months later after I've completed the game. I want that available at launch so that I can experience the story for the first time ever with those settings. I appreciate new players coming into the game, getting to experience it like that. But what about the people that placed the pre-orders? The ones that showed your investors that you were going to do well with your sales? The ones that show that they're fans of your company? Why were they left in the dark? It's frustrating to see this stuff happening because if there's not going to be a feature like that at the launch, why add it in later? People are not going to come back to Dying Light 2 going, Oh my god, they've changed the colour grading. I can now play on fucking Gritty. I can make it look similar to how it looked in 2019. Nobody's going to do that. You'll have the odd hardcore fan that will come back and revisit and they'll try it, but it's not going to last. You're not going to pull in 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 players by adding a different color grading option in the video settings of your game. I don't know how much they've done to this game since the launch. When I first played it, it was a buggy mess. The story, in my opinion, was nowhere near as good as the first one. It felt as though they really dropped off. I played through the entire game from start to finish. Took me 30 odd hours or something like that. I did a little bit of exploration here and there. But I paid and I, I bought the ultimate edition of the game. Like, granted, it's my job. I buy the big edition of most games. But there are people out there with jobs, families, and they don't get a lot of time to game. They want a really good experience. You go play Dying Light 1. You have the volatiles chasing you just whenever it's nighttime. You have that little bit of like a fear factor to it then you get number two and they've added rpg elements to nighttime you now have this survival mechanic you have a set time until you become infected so you can't go out and explore like freely during the night because you're on a timer you also had it where you had to get to what is it infected or like basically chase stage number four or the max stage or whatever and then the volatiles would start chasing you and now, six months later, we're getting updates where they've added more zombies to the city. Why were they not there in the beginning? It's a zombie game. I'm just trying to find my receipt of how much I actually paid for it. So I pre-ordered it. I paid £90 and I, I bought it for release on the Series X. And now, six months later or six and a half months later or whatever, and they've now added in these features. So, like, with the biters being more aggressive at night, why were they so passive in the first place? Their, their entire goal, their design, is to bite your fucking face off. Why were they never aggressive to begin with? And virals are now much more vigilant. They'll leave their hideouts more eagerly if they hear a fight nearby. Why were they scared? There's so many questions. And as I said, I appreciate they're listening to the community. They're putting fixes in. But what about the people that basically started the game off? When it first launched, those people that were willing to sit there and play it, why did they not get that same experience? Why did it take six and a half months to add in a color grading option to make it look gritty? That should have been there from the get-go. These things that get implemented into games 
should be there at the launch. You see a lot of games doing it nowadays. You have season passes of adding cut content into the game. You see DLC cut content. You have games like Outriders. They have one end game mode and it takes them over a year to implement a second one. And it's just a fucking grind fest. You have games like Saints Row 2022 doing nothing innovative and actually in some ways being worse than the, the, the game they released 14 years ago. But at the end of all of it, even if the game is a good experience or whatever excuse people want to come up with to defend these companies, at the end of it, people are paying a very good amount of money to get their hands on these products. And they come out like absolute shit year in, year out. And not only that, if you think about it, they've just announced their first DLC for Dying Light 2. So it could be, oh look, please come back to our game. Please purchase the season pass or whatever it is. The expansion pass, whatever you want to call it. Please purchase it and play our DLC. Look, we're listening to our community because it comes out around the same time that the announcement comes out for the DLC. In fact, it was the same day. I just don't get how much longer we're going to have to wait to get solid game experiences, at least in the AAA department of the gaming industry. There's so many messes that get put out nowadays, and you still get the white knights, the brown nosers, whatever you want to call them, you still get the people defending them as though the companies are their friends. It's a nice addition to add these things into the game, to listen to the community, but it's very odd that this stuff happens the same day as they announce their DLC. Six and a half months to make your biters more aggressive, to add more to the city, to give a color grading option in video settings. Six and a half months is what it's taken them. And what I want you guys to do is let me know your thoughts and stuff about it in the comments. Do you think it's weird that they put out a community update the same day they announced the DLC? And check out this video if you want to see other Dying Light 2 content on the channel. That's going to do it for this one. I'll see you in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.